Okay. You ready? Yes. Okay. Well, um, we have some questions and thoughts to go over after our latest premiere video. Oh, there we go. We have some more lights. This is the Nordic Track Rower 900. This feels... Okay. Um, well, we had some small high beetle problems, as you saw in the premiere, and we are still dealing with the small high beetles. However, I think we're in a better place now. We replaced the traps. We put a little more oil in those traps as well. And we put more than just the two that you saw in the video into that hive. So there's a few more in there as well. A um, couple of different boxes. So we've got, I think, two in each box, just about, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. yep. Um, some other things that if you guys have small hive beetle problems, you can do to help combat them is make sure you have a strong hive is, is good. Making sure that the bees don't have too much room. Uh, that could be a problem because then that it's harder for them to, harder for the bees to then um, kind of, def yeah, defend right. the hive, kind of get those bees trapped so they can't really do too much damage. But it's kind of a catch-22, right? Because it's it's spring and everybody's saying, <laughs> make sure you add more space because you don't want your bees to swarm. But also, if you have a pest problem, you don't want to add too much space. So it's like, <laughs> it's, how much space is the right amount of space? <laughs> That's kind of true. Well, you you want your bees to expand, right? You, you want to make sure that they have some room. Um, so once you get... What, what would you say? 80% of the frames yep. drawn? That's that's what I would say. If Once you get 80% of the dra frames drawn in one box, you're good to put another box on. I wouldn't put two boxes on if you're combating pests. Yeah. Really, I wouldn't put two boxes on if it's not, unless it's drawn, drawn comb anyway. Well, how big's the box? Oh, that's true. So oh. if, it's, if it's like a shallow super that you're putting on, I would put two. If it's a... Like deep box, I would not put two. I would just put the one. Mm. It just kind of depends on, you know, what what size boxes you're running. Are you running vertical boxes or are you running horizontal? Horizontal is pretty easy. If you have 80% drawn out, add three or more empty frames to the end and have your follower board. But uh, vertical, uh, what we're doing is we have our two eight-frame brood boxes and then we'll put two empty shallows on top. Yeah, and then he has a difference between the War A, and then we have a couple of 10 frame hives as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're all a little bit different, so you kinda gotta feel the bees out. Yep. Uh, okay, so you squished that wax, we saw that, you just kinda smushed it in your hands, what did it feel oh. like? Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, if you've ever taken uh, Rice Krispie treats and you've you've moved them left and right or just bent them or broke them off, that's what that comb felt like was a Rice Krispie treat because it was not very pliable. You could kind of, if you listen in the video, you hear it kind of crunching a little bit. And that's really, really the best uh, example is a Rice Krispie treat. If you take one of those, you can bend them and do things with them, but they also crunch and make these different noises. Uh, that's what it feels like now, just coming out of winter and it's just empty comb, no bees on them. But in a week or two, once the bees start getting on them, warming up the wax, it's not gonna feel that way. It's gonna be very, uh, yeah, very squishy. Almost like chewing gum. Yep. Almost like chewing gum. Once the bees get on it and they warm it up, they start walking around, all of that, it almost feels like chewing gum if you, if you press your fingers yep. in it. But if, if you already have a mess from fall, where your comb's wonky and all over the place, now's really the time to fix it because once those bees get on there, they start putting stuff in the cells or they're just warming up the, the cells in general. It's gonna be easier to move, more difficult because you have bees everywhere. Definitely true, mm -hmm. definitely true. Uh, we ran into that a little bit with our long lane hive. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't you just take the wax out? 
Why did, why did you decide just to squish it instead of just pulling it and making some candles? Because we have done that in the past. Mm -hmm. Well, I need the bees to put nectar in the frame. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I mean, just... I don't want to take out the wax and make a candle when I could leave the wax in, have them correct the the issue that I fixed, and then just go ahead and fill it with nectar, and then we have honey. Yeah. So some of the times that we've, when we have pulled the wax out to melt it down, make candles, or whatever else we're doing, lip balm, whatever, um, it's because it's so far out or there's like two little combs coming down from the frame from the top of the frame where you only need one coming down that way they can build it straight from there um that's kind of what i was getting <laughs> sorry yeah. i wasn't very clear with the question um but um yeah that's that's really why mm -hmm. that we only want one coming down we want it to be nice and straight and if there were multiple you're not going to squish two Two pieces of comb together. You only want the one, but yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, what was your first thought when you saw those frames that had fallen down in that nuke box? Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> so we opened up the nuke box and I hadn't checked it. We hadn't been feeding it. Really what we did is we set it last summer we just caught a swarm we stuck them in a nuke box and then halfway through the summer i looked in and i was like oh well let's add a second nuke box so that they can pull all that out they'll put stores in and then over winter uh they'll be fine i didn't realize that they were going to be so fine over the winter that when we looked and didn't have to feed uh yeah essentially and a couple of weeks after, we looked again, and all those frames had just fallen in on one side. And that that becomes a, a big issue because now they're connecting those frames to the bottom frames. The, the box itself is falling apart. Not really falling apart. It's just like warping and becoming bigger. And that's not something that you expect when you go out into the yard is to start taking boxes apart and moving bees when all you wanted to do is look in to see how they were doing. But sometimes when you have to, you have to. I think you can even hear me saying, oh no, in the yeah. video. It was just, it was, uh, it, it kind of hurts your heart a little bit mm -hmm. when you see that. Cause you're like, oh, how long have they been dealing with this? And it just kind of sucks. Like, were any of them hurt? Whenever they fell, because we, I mean, we weren't there. We don't know yeah. how long it had been that way. Because the queen could have been crushed. The queen could have been crushed because the frames were actually resting on the frames, on the top of the frames below it. Like there were, it was, mm -hmm. yeah, it's sad. But, hi. Did you fix that box? Yeah. Yeah. We got, we ran, ran into the honey shed, got another box, brought it out. If we were in a different apiary, that would be a very difficult thing to do because you got to drive home essentially unless you brought extra supplies. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we just ran into the honey shed, got the box, brought it out, moved all the frames into the new box, and then took the old one away so that I could go fix it. Did you get the, the fix on camera? Is that going to be a, an upcoming video? Yeah. Hi, Tall Cedars. Welcome. <laughs> You have a question about your bucket feeder. Let's hit that. Oh, Whoops. Yep. Hit so, that. Okay. I don't know. No, I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. Hold on. Sorry. There we go. All right. You have a question about the bucket feeder. It leaked in the hive. Wasn't when I put it on. What is happening? Oh, so the temperature change between the day and the night mm -hmm. is what's basically, if you think about it, you got your bucket, you got your your liquid but on top of the liquid you have a little bit of air and as that air uh, expands and contracts it's pushing your your syrup down now it kind of it kind of works during you know nominal change in temperature because it's a vacuum so if that vacuum's not you know compressing and con or uh, contracting and expanding a bunch then it just kind of stays steady and will hold your liquid in the bucket and it won't spill everywhere. But as it gets down to colder temperatures, that that contraction really uh, comes together and then 
when it warms up during the day, it's really going to expand and that's what pushes all your, your liquid out. So on the plus side, during the day is when it's leaking and then, um, yeah, at, at night you should, should get very minimal yeah. drippage, but it, it sucks too. Cause during the day, if it leaks, then your bees are all wet and hopefully they can clean themselves before it gets cold again. And hopefully it's not getting too cold if you're feeding syrup in, in the hive also. That's something mm -hmm. that we've talked about. We, uh, we always make sure that our nighttime temperatures are high 30s to low 40s at a minimum if we're going to be feeding sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. We don't want that sugar syrup to freeze in the hive. Hopefully that answered your question. If not, let us know. We can dive into it a little bit more. And us being in North Carolina, it's kind of easier than being, Definitely. you know, up in BC. So, yeah, uh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, how cold is it up there? I can't even imagine. Uh, oof. oof. Um, let me see. Oh, are you gonna do a video about the fixing fixing that box? Did you did you film I that? Didn't. You didn't I didn't film didn't. it. All, okay. Honestly, all I did was I took some big clamps and I I clamped it together and then. Uh, broke the propolis seal because the anytime uh, the boxes start to warp or anything there becomes a little gap and the bees will go and fill it in with propolis when I first made the boxes I thought this is great they're gonna fill it in with propolis it'll be fine mm -hmm. then they have more propolis in the hive everything's great I did not think about frames not fitting anymore once the box expands I mean that seems like a no-brainer but mm -hmm. at the time I just I I'd watched a Marla Spivak uh, lecture and she had talked about propolis being in the hive and how wonderful uh, it, it's supposed to be when they have a lot of propolis in there and how your bees are gonna even do better than than a normal situation so mm -hmm. that's what I was thinking I was not thinking about does this work for for humans and it, it doesn't and if, if you're not familiar with Dr. Spivak uh, she is awesome if you've never heard her talk she probably has some lectures on YouTube, I, I feel mm -hmm. like. Um, but we, we saw her at one of our state beekeeping conferences. She, she did a lecture there, and it was excellent. She talked about the benefits of propolis and how you can encourage your bees as much as it's frustrating for beekeepers to have bees that are prolific with their propolis and sealing and everything. But it's really good for the bees. Yep. So. And she, she she's a professor at... Um, think, Minnesota State? I was going to say, I think it's yeah. University of Minnesota. Or one but, of the two. Yeah, yeah, somewhere up there. Whichever one but, has the purple background and the M, the golden M. Mm -hmm. Golden Gophers? <laughs> I think that's the hockey team. Um, let me see. What's next? What's next for us? Well? Well, I'm currently working on a swarm trap video. It, and it's not your typical like how to put up a swarm trap or anything. Uh, we're, we're trying to just share our experience. So when we went out there and we needed resources, we took from our swarm trap. And I, I'll show you how we did that and uh, climbing up the ladder and everything. Then um, we also have a video coming out that transferring all of our, our frames from a vertical Langstroth hive into a long lang. So we'll show you how that that and, went too. And if you haven't seen that, check out our video. We show you kind of how we did it, how we built the hive. Oh, and, how we built and it. And got it ready for bees and all of that. I was it's, like, they can't see it yet. It's, <laughs> it's still in production. How we how we made the long lane, long lane hive, because we did build it ourselves. Most of our hives that we have in our apiary, we have built ourselves. Um, that's why he was talking about they're not all perfect by any means, mm -hmm. but they work and the bees don't yeah. seem to complain about it. <laughs> yeah. the, bees, the bees seem to like it more I, because the the ones that people buy are so like perfectly made and they're they're like when you put them out there there's no gaps or anything yeah. and my hives after about six months will start like Oof. having a gap here and there where it's four cells. Negative four Celsius. Oh my goodness. That's, what's that? That's only like 32 Fahrenheit. I don't, like, it's still too cold. Maybe it's less than that. It was, okay, I'm going to tell you right now. I was outside working in the garden, getting some more things planted. Okay. And it was, I think 47 degrees Fahrenheit when I checked the temperature and I was out there in two layers 
like of, of shirts and a hoodie and the wind chill was just biting through my sweatshirt. I was so cold. But the bees were flying. <laughs> the bees were flying when I was mm -hmm. out there. So, yeah. yeah they didn't they, seem to mind too much. Yeah, they got to do their cleansing flight. And then you'll also notice that they're, they're skipping off all the, the flowers or whatever you have going on out there. What they're really looking for right now is water. Which yeah. is kind of weird because everybody says don't add more water to the hive. But then, <laughs> oh, <Simeon> Parker. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they say don't add more water to the hive. But you'll see bees trying to get in the pools because it smells like chlorine or your hot tub. Um, hot tub. We we <laughs> set out we set out like one of those um, Home Depot like inset pond molds. Yeah, that's not a very good way to describe. It's, it's just, a plastic. It's just a plastic pond. pond. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, we put water in it. I put a bunch of leaves in there. So over winter, it's basically steeped in like the tree leaves and the bees really like that. Yeah. Um, we and did. We added some salt to it as well because we, we have noticed that they, they really like my hot tub. They like <laughs> getting at um, just the edges of the hot tub where mm -hmm. the steam, you know, kind of it's evaporated and it's condensing and mm -hmm. it's falling down a little bit. And yeah, they're, they're like in and out. I saw uh, three more there yeah. this morning, but they are getting at the pond as well. Um, we're just hoping that they're not getting in our neighbor's pool. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they do, I think I think their pool is a saltwater pool too. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that's been our main concern since we started beekeeping. We, yeah. live, uh, we live out in the sticks, but it's still in like a neighborhood. Yeah. And they have pools because this is North Carolina and in the summer people love to swim. Uh, and they also like to grill. One of the, the other things that, that we struggled with is when we were doing the open feeding videos, because we wanted to show that we could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, once, once that feed runs out, the bees are gonna like spend the next week looking for landmarks <laughs> that also look like where you put your feed. So if I put yeah. a 10 gallon or five gallon feed bucket next to you know, an apple tree or like a bunch of rose bushes, they're going to go to everybody's rose bushes or apple trees in the neighborhood looking for more feed. Uh, and it kind of bothers some of the neighbors. I, I put, I put it on our deck and, oh. uh, <laughs> every deck in the neighborhood, the neighbors were like, Hey, there's, there's quite a bit of bees. Can you come look at it and find out and make yeah. sure it's not a problem? Uh, and I was like, that's, that's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're not, they're just looking for food. And they, they were like, well, we can feed them, right? What do we feed them? N nothing. Don't feed them anything. Just leave plant them alone. Plant flowers. Yeah, plant some plant, flowers. Plant some flowers. So You know that pretty grass that you have in your yard? Get just, rid of that. Just get rid of that. <laughs> Let the weeds go. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at our yard right now, our, most of our neighbors do have grass. Mm -hmm. We've actually overseeded our yard with clover. Um, so we have a lot of clover, uh, white Dutch clover and crimson, yep. right? Crimson. And then we also have dandelions and henbit. And oh my goodness, that henbit pollen that the girls are bringing in right now. It's so bright red and pretty. Yep. It's so nice. So our, our front and backyard will go through stages. We tried to set it up so, so it'd be easy. Like henbit first, which is nice purple uh, flower that maybe maybe gets two, three inches high. Mm -hmm. And it just coats your yard. So it's just a bunch of purple flowers. And then after that, the clover will start popping up and the hembit will die off and you'll get this white and red mixture, uh, the little white balls is Dutch clover and then the, the red cones that come up is uh, our crimson clover. And some of the neighbors really, really like it. They like driving <laughs> by and seeing, you know, the, the front yard changing different colors and it, it doesn't look like a mess. You know, it, it doesn't look like it's overgrowing. It just has different color flowers. And you, you just got to kind of trim it that way so that you're still weed eating. You're still doing other things to make your yard look nice, but you're not, you're not just growing grass. You yeah. have, you know, like I said, purple, and then we have white and then red. It's just coating our front yard. And then we'll have the dandelions in between. Um, yeah. And we actually cut our grass in stages mm -hmm. as well. So we have the front yard and then we have what we call the front half of the backyard and then the back half of the backyard. So we'll, we'll take turns kind of, so there's always something in the yard that's blooming. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. That's a little bit nice too, I think. Mm -hmm. And something I didn't realize, because everybody has dandelions in the neighborhood, I didn't think bees really got at, at dandelions, like or not dandelions, um, daffodils. Oh, the daffodils, daffodils. Yes. Everybody has daffodils. And we have a ton in our yard, too. And we do, too. Yeah. But every time I've looked at them, no bees were getting at them at all. Yeah. Well, this year, it's big change. We see bees on the daffodils all the time. And I don't know what the difference is, if the bees know something we don't know. But, yeah, they're on them. Um, our rose bushes are going to be blooming in the next, like, two months we got yeah. peach tree um yeah. cherry trees uh, blueberry bushes raspberry blackberry and they're even on the turnips <clears throat> right now oh not turnips um uh, radishes we have radish. radishes yep. that we let go to bloom um uh, go to flower and there's they're on that it's yep. it's nice we have we have a part of our backyard that i used to till all the time which is fine but the soil always got like real dense and hard after we planted anything and I figured, let's just plant a bunch of these daikon radishes. They're big white radishes that are like that long. <laughs> um, and they'll break up the soil for us. And then we'll be able to plant things in loose soil, like potatoes and stuff like that. But I found out the daikon radish flowers. And it's these little white flowers that kind of, if you have arugula or something like that, it looks very similar. Yeah. And the bees will get on... The arugula, they get on the daikon radish, and they're pulling off this uh, yellowish gray pollen off of them. The, the nice thing is the ground bees like the daikon radish flower a little bit, but the bumblebees don't. And there's one butterfly <laughs> that oh, I keep seeing. Really it's like a white, white butterfly, butterfly that, yeah. that gets at them, too. Quit mowing a little bit. So mm. it's Oh, thank you. Yep. I'm putting daikon in this summer. Okay, that's exciting. You'll have to let us know what you think yeah. of it. We weren't super sure because we're, we're not big radish fans just in general. Mm -hmm. So um, we looked up a few recipes and we tried one that was like bacon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like fake fake bacon out of radishes. It was interesting. It, mm -hmm. was, it wasn't bad. It takes a long time for the daikon to flower too, so don't be yeah. surprised if they True. get really, really big and then you go into winter and nothing happens. When you come into spring, those same ones that, and, and they stay green the whole time, even if it's snow on the ground. Yeah. Um, and then once you come into spring, you'll, you'll all of a sudden, within two days, these big shoots will come up and they'll have the flowers, uh, flower bulbs on them and two, three days after that, they start flowering. That's really pretty. Yeah, and they're, they're little white flowers, like you said. They look kind of like the arugula flowers. They even have some purple on them, too. Yep. They and I was really nice. surprised when it was snowing here. Like, the green leaves never really faded into or died or anything. They yeah. just stayed green. Yeah, we have some other plants that are like that, too, that I think is kind of not normal. Like, our parsley, so we, we have in our garden as well, and our parsley never stopped this year it was green like throughout the mm -hmm. entire winter we we had snow on the ground at one point it wasn't it wasn't much by any means it was like but a foot yeah we got about a foot but it didn't stick around or anything like that we didn't like get snow you know consecutive days or anything like that but mm -hmm. it yeah it never died it's still kicking all through winter well yeah that's all i um, know yeah got any extra questions before we go I can do some effects, I think. <laughs> you wanna you wanna play with that a minute? Sure. Let's see if anybody wants to say anything else. Oh, there's just different colors. Oh filters. Oh bubbles! <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. okay, how do I go back to normal? There we go. Okay. Well, I think uh, oh, something no, that's up. from before. Oh, that's the old one. Yeah. We'll wait till next chat. Okay, thank you. Have a great day, you too. And thanks for watching. Uh, if, uh, if anybody has any questions at any point, you can email us at rascalapiri at gmail.com. Also, you can check out our website. We have a lot of articles about um, high beetles and pest management. Um, some other things also kind of went through our master beekeeper, our state's master beekeeper program. 
And so we, I've been doing articles. Hi, so our rascal decided to come join us too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but we have a bunch of articles uh, going through our Master Beekeeper Hi. program. So if you're interested in learning more about come beekeeping in. and just honeybees in general, oh, you can check that out sure. as well. Uh, if you're looking for some nice beekeeping merchandise, we have a store, all of the shirts we designed ourselves. And if you have any ideas for more, <laughs> for more, let us know. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Thanks for cool. watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.